So this upcoming semester, I'm teaching a topology class, and I thought I'd make a video about an example that I generally do in this type of class. And one of the things that you usually learn in topology is the notion of a metric space. And put very simply, a metric space is a set where a distance between any two points makes sense. And we'll look at an example where distance is very strange and an example where distance doesn't even exist at all. But before we do any of that, we need to recall the definition of a metric and thus a metric space. So let's say we've got any set X and we'll define a metric as follows. So it's going to be a function from X cross X to R satisfying three conditions. So the first is that d of x, y is bigger than or equal to zero. So that means that the distance between any two points cannot be negative. And furthermore, the distance is equal to zero if and only if you're at the same point. So that means if you've got two unequal points, they must have a positive distance between each other. And I think that intuitively makes sense, especially if this metric is really supposed to be a distance type function then we should have that kind of condition. And then, well, what are some other conditions we should have? Well, we should have this symmetry condition that d of xy is the same thing as d of yx. And so you shouldn't matter which direction, if you will, you're measuring the distance. You should always get the same value. And then finally, we've got this thing called the triangle inequality, which says for any points x, y, and z, dxy, or sorry, dxz is less than or equal to dxy plus dyz. And you can kind of think of that as a picture. And here we've got the distance between x and z. And then in magenta around here, we have the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z. And you can see that the inequality is clear if you look at this picture. And like I said before, we're going to look at two major examples here. The first one is going to be when distances are weird. Okay, so let's define the following metric on the real numbers. So that means we've got a function from R cross R to R, and we're gonna define it as follows. So dxy is equal to the absolute value of f of x minus f of y, where f is a function from R to R, and while f cannot be any function, it in fact can be any one-to-one -one function. So let's put that in there. So f from r to r is any one-to-one -one, uh, function. Okay, so let's check that that satisfies these three conditions. And a bunch of these will be pretty clear. So let's notice that d of xy, which is equal to, well, like I said, absolute value of f of x minus f of y, well that's definitely going to be always bigger than or equal to zero. And well that's because the absolute value is always going to give you something non-negative. And then let's also prove this part right here. So let's suppose that d of xy equals zero, but that's if and only if the absolute value of f of x minus f of y equals zero. But then that's going to be if and only if f of x minus f of y equals zero. In other words, if f of x equals f of y, but then that's gonna be if and only if x equals y because f is a one-to-one -one function. That's like the definition of being a one-to-one -one function. So that means both parts of our first condition are satisfied. And then, well, let's just point out that our second condition is pretty clearly satisfied. And then let's move on to our third condition which is also pretty clearly satisfied because we have the triangle inequality for the absolute value function, but let's work through the details just for fun. Okay, so let's observe we have the following two inequalities. So negative dxy is gonna be less than or equal to f of x minus f of y, which in turn is gonna be less than positive dxy. And that's simply from this kind of obvious inequality that A is always going to be between the absolute value of A and negative the absolute value of A. In fact, it's going to be exactly equal to one of them, but you can put it in an inequality like this. 
And then well, we can play the same game with uh, the distance from y to z. So negative dyz is going to be less than or equal to f of y minus f of z, which in turn is less than or equal to d of yz. And now what we'll do is add these two equations. Now over here on the left, we'll have minus dxy plus dyz, where I factored that minus sign out. And now in the middle, the f of y is going to cancel, and we'll have f of x minus f of z. And then uh, over there on the right-hand side, we'll have d of xy plus d of yz. But then notice that this inequality in light of this uh, yellow box is exactly what we need for this triangle inequality. Now that we've got this general setup for building lots of different metrics on the real numbers, let's look at a specific example. So for our specific example, we'll take our distance function to be, well, absolute value of f of x minus f of y, but f of x is defined to be x as long as x is not equal to 0 or 1. And then if it's equal to 0, you'll get 1. And if it's equal to 1, you'll get 0. So in fact, this function is almost always the identity function, but then you can think of it as swapping zero and one. So let's notice that if you were to find the distance, for instance, between zero and two, notice that's gonna give us the absolute value of f of zero minus f of two, which is equal to the absolute value of one minus two, because f of zero is one, which is equal to one. So in fact, what we have here is that the distance between zero and two in this setup is one, which is kind of strange. And then maybe the distance between one and two, well, that's gonna be f of one minus f of two, but that's gonna be zero minus two or two. So the distance between one and two in this setup is in fact two, because like I said before, we've swapped one and two. And now, before we move on, I want to talk about how a metric is related to the notion of a topology on a set. So a topology on a set is really a description of the building blocks of the open sets on a set. So, I mean, I haven't really defined what an open set is or what it means to be a building block here. And if you'd like more information on this, you're in luck because I'm making a full course in topology on my second channel. You can find a link for that in the description. So anyway, the way a metric will build open sets is with the notion of an open ball, which is all points a certain distance from another point. So let's maybe make a little bit of a definition of this real quick and we can see some other weirdness of our example. So let's say we've got the ball of radius r based at a. So that's gonna be all points x, really from our arbitrary set up here, capital X, where the distance from capital X to a is strictly less than r. So let's maybe look at an example of an open ball with our strange metric right here. Let's look at perhaps the ball of radius three halves based at the number two. So what I mean by that is all real numbers x satisfying this condition that the distance between x and two is less than three halves. And now remember that our distance function is really our normal distance function almost all of the time as long as x is not equal to zero or one. Okay, so let's maybe get our normal picture of this interval on the board first, which notice that would normally start at one and a half, or sorry, one half, because that's gonna be one and a half less than two, and then it would go up to seven halves. Okay, and then, well, let's see. If we were to shade this, everything would kind of be okay, except when we were when we would encounter this point one right here. And in fact, one is not a member of this set. And one is not a member of this set because as we calculated up here, the distance between one and two is two, but that's gonna be bigger than one and a half. 
oh, but look at this, the distance between zero and two is one. So that means that zero will be a member of this set. So instead of having just a, like a normal open interval when we find a ball of radius r, it's perhaps something like this. So this type of thing right here, along with probably normal open intervals as well, would serve as the building blocks of open sets in the topology generated by this crazy metric right here. Okay, so, well, we've just seen that distances can be defined in a strange way, even on the real numbers, which seems like it would be a fairly simple set. Well, in fact, there's a structure on the real numbers where it's impossible to define the notion of distance at all. So let's look at that. Okay, so to build our example, we'll need a different topology on the real numbers, something called the lower limit topology. So in the lower limit topology on the real numbers, instead of open sets being built by open intervals, they are built by half open intervals. So in other words, the interval from A to B, including A, but not B. And what I mean by built from these intervals is that any open set can be written as a union, perhaps an arbitrary union or an infinite union of open sets of this form. So it's actually, the notion of this is called a basis for a topology, and you can kind of think of it like the basis for a vector space, although it's not exactly the same idea. Okay, so now here's a fact which we won't prove, although in the course that I mentioned earlier, we will prove that at some point, and that is a separable topological space, X, has a metric if and only if it is second countable. So to be second countable means it has a countable basis. In other words, there's a countable collection that is used to build all of the open sets. And separable means that it has a countably dense subset. And well, what do we mean by a dense subset? Well, we mean that every open set will intersect that dense subset. So now let's introduce some notation. We'll have our uh, subscript L will just be normal real numbers, but with the lower limit topology. So this topology over here where open sets are built by half open intervals. And we're gonna first show that RL is separable. So how can we do that? Well, what we'll do is take U in RL, which is open. So we'll say that it is an open set. But any open set will have an element of the basis. And we know that these types of things are basis elements, if you will, for this topology. So that means we've got an open set of this form, which is a subset of U. So in other words, there exists A less than B, which are real numbers, such that this half open set AB is contained in our arbitrary open set U. But now we know that in normal real numbers, the rational numbers are dense. We won't prove that. In other words, we know that Q intersected with the open interval AB is non-empty, and that's just by density in the normal topology. But now let's observe that that's most definitely gonna be a subset of Q intersected with the half open interval A to B. But if this set right here has a non-empty subset, then that means that this thing right here also has to be non-empty. But that's exactly what we need for this to be separable. Okay, so next we'll show that RL is not second countable. But then by our fact over here, since it's separable and not second countable, then it cannot be metrizable. In other words, it cannot have a metric. But it not having a metric means that there's no notion of distance on R with the lower limit topology. So I think that's pretty interesting in itself. Okay, so here's what we'll do. So let's take, I'll call this calligraphic B to be any basis for the lower limit, for the lower limit topology. 
And then we're going to let x and y be real numbers with x less than y. But then by the fact that this is a basis, what that tells us is there exist two basis sets, bx and by, such that x is an element of b sub x, which is a subset of the interval from x to x plus 1. And so we're doing a couple of things here. We're using the fact that if you've got a basis for a topology, then for any point in that topological space, you can find a basis set containing that point. And then also for any open set in that topological space, you can find a basis set that's a subset of that open set. So we're using those two things all at once. And then, well, we can do the same thing for y. So y is a subset of b sub y, or an element of b sub y, which is a subset of the open interval from, uh, or sorry, the half open interval from y to y plus 1. But now let's note the following. Since x is less than y, we have x is in b sub x, but x is not an element of b sub y. But what that tells us is that b sub x is not equal to b sub y. But look at what we've really done here. We've started with two real numbers, x and y, and we've produced two elements of the basis which are different b sub x and b sub y. So in other words, what we've done is induced an injective map from R to this basis of our topological space. In other words, the basis of the lower limit topology. And, well, that injective map takes x to b sub x. But then we know that r is uncountable, and since r is injected into b, that means that b is also uncountable. But since b is uncountable, that means that, in fact, we do not have a countable basis for the lower limit topology. But again, since we showed that r sub l is separable, and now it's not second countable, that means that it cannot have a metric. So just to finally finish everything off, that means that there's no good notion of distance between two points in the lower limit topology. And that's a good place to stop.